Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It's Saturday afternoon, and I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves and getting ready for tomorrow. For me, I've been running around today to make sure that we have everything together for our game meals. And you know, I've been doing, <clears throat> since I've been doing themed meals, you know, basically feasting on what the opposition uh, opposition would be feasting on. We've gone through a four-game win streak, so I'm going to keep this theme going. We're going to New England, so we're going to have clam chowder. We're going to have baked bean sandwiches, and we're going to have a shrimp roll to go with it. So we're definitely going to be feasting on New England, and hopefully we'll feast on another victory. But um, And a uh, shout-out to my man, David Wiley, who's already prepping stuff for tomorrow. So thank you very much. And I, I must admit that if it weren't for all of you guys, it, I couldn't do what we're doing here. Um, I talked to Stacey Schubert um, earlier today. Uh, it was great talking with her. And she wants us to do um, kind of some stuff special for all the wonderful ladies in here. So we're going to have some details of some things that we're going to be doing that is going to be just for you ladies out there. And uh, definitely will be fun. Just kind of like a support group and stuff. You know, kind of hang, you know, talk about different problems and things in life and stuff. You know, just something special because... Here at Joe Boo Sports Report, we try and look out for everybody. Um, so, speaking of the ladies, I have to give a shout out, of course, to uh, Gina C. She always shares with me great information and stuff, and she shared this with me here. Demonte Demontre Kaziz got fined sixty two hundred dollars, sixty two hundred dollars, um, for his alleged push of the uh, giant wide receiver. Um, he got 6,200 to me, got 12,000. Um, the thing that I look at this as I watch this over and over again, um, is watching to me literally hit a guy in a helmet with three officials around, you know what they always taught us in football, never hit the second time. First time usually gets missed. The second hit almost always gets seen. And more importantly, the thing that is stupid as can be is you are hitting a helmet. A helmet designed to protect the player. That is designed so they won't get a concussion. You are hitting that with your hand. Your hand that you make your livelihood with. If you can't catch the ball, you are unemployed. I'm sorry. Do you really think that you're going to hurt the guy by hitting him with your fist into his helmet? Dude, you got to be smarter than that. You got to be smarter than that. Um, at least he did apologize after the game and stuff, but you can't do stupid things that are going to risk your career. Just can't. Okay, so tomorrow, hope you guys tune in starting 1245. Uh, we'll be starting our live stream. We'll, of course, follow the Giants and see what kind of stupid things they do. We'll be following, of course, the Washington football team and see what stupid things they do. And then we'll be rolling right into the Dallas Cowboys versus New England. The interesting thing that we get right now is we have all these people that are on the Mac Jones bandwagon. Oh, my God. This rookie, man, he's great because we're hearing that Mac Jones' completion percentage, which is in the 70s, is right now better than Dak Prescott's rookie record. That this guy, man, he's doing it up. He's great. In fact, we've heard him saying basically, you know, you can't be scared of digs. You trust your reads. You do what you got to do. And he sounds like, He's got his shit together. The question is, should we be scared of Mac Jones? So, you know me. I'm a numbers guy. And I, I can't say I've watched too many of the New England games, so I can't say that I've seen. And this is the thing that you always um, hear talking heads with the numbers and things. 
And so, like you said, we go through here. Let, let me pop this up here. I'm trying something new here, and let me know if you like this better than when I use the uh, television screen. But, pow. I always like to use pro football reference. You know, I like at least use the same site if, you, if you're doing stuff because then at least it's consistent. But pro football reference does a great job of breaking down almost any, any numbers you can imagine. And you can really go through it. What I like here is you'll see the yellow line right here because that's what I've actually highlighted. Completion percentage. And what it will do is whatever one of these categories that you click on, it will put them in order of what the, uh, the, the ranking is. So right now, completion percentage-wise, Kyler Murray is, is NFL record at 75.2. Dak Prescott is second with 73.9, which is, you know, would be a record if um, – Kyler Murray weren't ahead of Dak Prescott. And then you have Russell Wilson at 72. You got Joe Burrow at 71. And then you see little old Mac, Mac tonight, Jones, at 71.1. And you say, oh, my God, he's up there with Joe Burrow and Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott and Kyler Murray. This guy's good because that's what they've been feeding you on TV. Oh, my God, Mac Jones, you know. And, and even listening to some of the New England stations that say the Dallas Cowboys overrated defense, that New England and Mac Jones will be able to take care of them. Okay. But here's what I always tell you to do. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper into the numbers and understand the thing about passes the further you go down the field, the less likelihood of making completions. It's just natural. I mean, it's, 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 it's just the way it is. If you're throwing a screenplay, pretty much it's almost 100% that you'll make a completion. Now, there, there are some times you'll make a few bad passes here or not. But for the most part, it's close to 100% that you should be making screenplays. If you're doing one-on-one -on -one battles on outside in the flat, chances are you're probably going to make those completions. If you're throwing deeper, well, some of those passes get to be 50-50. Some of them might be 25-75. Your likelihood of succeeding the further you get down the field is less, so you'll have more incompletions. So you need to not only look at the completion percentage, as you also have to look at how far the ball is actually traveling. How much risking of the biscuit are you doing? And here's the thing on here. Because as I go through here and everybody is feeding us that Mac Jones is great. Let's look at the yard average. Russell Wilson, of course, who, who always risks the biscuit and literally is keeping the Seattle Seahawks together. I don't know that uh, they're going to stay together without Russell Wilson. 9.6 yards. Kyler Murray, 9.2. So when you start thinking about Kyler Murray with a 75% completion percentage and the second longest passes per average, that's really outstanding because usually they don't go together like that. Usually you'll see one or the other. Uh, Matthew Stafford, who's got a 68% completion percentage, 9.2 like Kyler Murray, which is great. Lamar Jackson, surprisingly. Lamar Jackson doesn't have a great completion percentage, 67.1, but he's averaging 9.1 yards a pass, which is great. Joe Burrow is 8.8, .8, not bad, but still, you know, when you think of Kyler, uh, Russell Wilson almost a yard greater. Baker Mayfield, 8.6. Dak Prescott, 8.3. So he's not going as far down the field as, say, Russell Wilson or Kyler Murray, but, you know, it's getting those completions. So where is Mac Jones on here? I know you don't want me to read all these, but Daniel Jones is even getting 8.2. Teddy Bridgewater, 7.9. Jimmy Garoppolo, 7.8. Derek Carr, 7.8. Tom Brady, 7.7. Jameis Winston, 7.7. Pat Mahomes, 7.6. Justin Hubert, 7.6. Aaron Rodgers, 7.6. Carson Wentz, 7.6. Tyler Heineke, 7.6. Sam Darnold, 7.5. Josh Allen, 7.5. Kirk Cousins, 7.3. Ryan Tannehill, 7.2. Jalen Hurd, 7.1. Damn. David Mills, 7. Jared Goff, 6.6. .6. Ben Roethlisberger, 6.6. .6. And then finally, little old Mac, 27th. 27th at 6.5 per average. Hmm. 
6.5. So Dak is actually throwing the ball two yards almost per pass further down the field. Kyler Murray is throwing the ball three yards further down the field. So as we look at that completion percentage, it's kind of like, yeah, it is high up there. It may set the rookie record, but you ain't risking the biscuit. It's because it's a dink and dunk, dinking and dunking offense. I'm surprised we haven't heard that. Surprised? Very surprised. Then the next thing I look at, TDs. Tom Brady with 17, Pat Mahomes with 16, Dak Prescott 13, Justin Hubert with 13. Okay, hmm. Where is little old Mac? Mac, 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 Mac. Mac Jones, 27th with five TDs. Hmm. It's not very many TD passes. Okay. How about rating? Russell Wilson, of course, is tops, 125. Little old Dak is 116. Mac Jones, well, let's see, 25 at 86.4. Hmm. I'm not saying that Mac Jones isn't going to be a great quarterback, but for a rookie who has... Five TD passes and five interceptions. I'm not sure that he is the one to fear. The one to fear would be Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick has a way of getting guys in positions to win. And since the Dallas Cowboys have not won since 1996 in Foxborough, we should not take them lightly. With that being said, you know we're done here right now. And I hope you enjoyed the extra information here. And um, I will catch you on the flip side. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, we'll see you later. Okay.